Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. There are a lot of crazy things going on in this world. At least, that's the way I feel sometimes. Maybe you get that feeling too once in a while. I look at some of the things in the news, and I think that I kind of fall into one of two categories. Either I'm one of those people who used to say, what do we need those things for? I get from point A to point B just fine with my horse. Or maybe I'm the one saying, what's the matter with you people? Don't you have eyes? Can't you see? That guy, the emperor, he's got no clothes on. Well, either I'm turning into my grandfather or common sense is on vacation lately. One of the things that we'll talk about today is the popular rush towards driverless cars. Now, don't get me wrong, every once in a while while going down transit, I would love to see a few drivers disappear, but I'm not sure I want their cars forcing me off the road without them either. And if you're a cop, who do you give the ticket to? But driverless cars are a very popular and up and coming concept, especially in California. And we know if it comes from California, that bastion of good taste and practical values, it has to make sense, right? So the debate goes on. And who better to weigh in on that particular debate than my guest today on The Big Picture? Lauren Fix, the car coach. She'll not only give us the scoop on the, the future of driverless cars, but all things that get you from point A to point B on four wheels, that is, not four legs. Welcome to The Big Picture, Lauren Fix. <laughs> it's a <laughs> pleasure to have you here. Good yeah. to see you, Phil. Um, Driverless cars, is there a future? I mean, I, there's so many different scenarios mm -hmm. on the road. I mean, almost an infinite number of you know, road conditions mm -hmm. and uh, traffic conditions and, and things that can come up. I'm not sure I trust cars tooling down the highway, <laughs> you know, making judgments as to how to cope with everything. Well, this is part of the problem and you write about your big picture, you know, it's just, do I like things the way they are or do I want them to move forward? <laughs> and, and how does that impact everybody? It's not just you, it's everyone. So let me just give you a little background on driverless cars. In 2009, Audi had a TT, which is a little two-seater coupe, and they drove it to the top of Pikes Peak. And we were there, and we saw it, and it was all remote controlled. And we thought, this is cool, it's like a gigantic toy. They've used that technology since. And in the, around 2010, we had the opportunity to drive from Palo Alto to CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And we sat behind the car with our arms crossed. Of course, we had an engineer on the passenger side, another journalist in the car. And as we got to the border of California and Nevada, we stopped and they switched license plates. And then we got to close to Vegas and then we had to grab the wheel. And I asked, why? He says, well, on the highway, it's different. It's sort of like cruise control. You can trust it. You feel that confidence, but you still have to be ready to grab the wheel. And then when you got to the city with traffic, especially in Las Vegas, which is worse than anything we have here, even after a Sabres game or a football game, you have to be aware and you have to control the car. So my natural question, which would probably be your natural question was, well, what if I don't drive on a regular basis? What if I let this vehicle drive me and I grab the wheel? But the skill of riding a bicycle, you probably haven't done since you were a kid. But if you were to get on a bicycle today, you'd probably be a little wobbly at first, and then you'd figure it out. You'd get that natural muscle memory, right? So if you're not practicing the skill of driving on a daily basis, what's gonna happen when you do have to take the wheel? And people go, I'll never have to take the wheel. These computers are great, because you know your computer never crashes. Your tablet or your phone <laughs> never has a problem, right? <laughs> we used to make <laughs> jokes about you know, having a Windows-based car. Right, well. <laughs> you know, Talk about your computer crash. And Apple's working on cars, but I think their technology is great. Apple CarPlay and all that integration. We can talk about that in a bit. Yeah, if you're listening to music, but you know. Right, and you can use your navigation through it as well. There's a lot of things that these Android CarPlay yeah, you know, and Apple. My, oh. my, my GPS wanted me to go down a river. You know, the last time I was, you know, navigating yeah. towards Florida. I had the same problem just the other day. I was driving back from New York, and I wanted to get off at a location in Albany to get something to eat and it had me go through the worst area of town. Now that's a matter of opinion what the worst area of town is, but why wouldn't I stay on the highway for the longer period of time and then get off? Because it thought it knew better than me. And this is a concern that we're all gonna have to work with. But so you're looking at technology now. There's, you should know the different levels. There's five levels of autonomy. Zero, which means 
you got a 1998 Buick, Buick Regal, and it does, you do it all. You're in charge. Then you have level one, which would be more than airbags, more than anti-lock brakes. It might have like cruise control that doesn't let you get too close to the car in front of you. Then you have level two, which is like blind spot detection. And maybe the little light that's in your side view mirror that says, hey, you know, don't move over. Or maybe you'll get, if you've got a Honda, you get the lane watch, all that kind of really niceties that make it just a little better. Round view camera, cross traffic alert when you're backing out of a parking space. Those are great. And those help drivers be safer on the road. You get to level three, which is where we are today. There's nothing beyond level three. That's if you maybe drift out of your lane and it pushes you back. Maybe it gives you a notification on the dash. Maybe you should take a break and get a cup of coffee mm -hmm. because maybe you're drifting in your lane, but it tracks your eyes. Is that not crazy? It <laughs> tracks your eyes. So if it sees you looking away for too long having that conversation, ding on the dash, <laughs> pull over. You might be tired, get a cup of coffee, get out of the car. So all those kind of neat things. Level four is going to be much more integrated. And I have driven that. That's Cadillac Super Cruise, some of Audi's technology, Mercedes. Ford has it, Nissan. Every brand is, is just about jumping on it. And then level five is what Tesla claims to work, which it is not autopilot, which basically means you set it, you sit back and go, I'm going to take a nap or take a shave or put on some makeup or read a book. That does not actually exist. And actually, he's had to change that because the federal government got involved. So you really have to be... In, careful what you're buying and not be tricked by a salesperson, which is probably true with anything. Well, level six is getting married. I mean, you could have, <laughs> you have your, your wife sitting next to you in the car. Right. She's telling That's, you, don't go you know, there, make yeah, left here. Like, Why are you, you going know, that way? And I say, get in the back seat if you're going to drive. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's an age old, anyway. Right. Anyway, we, so autonomy is not there yet. And I'll tell you the reasons that we have, don't have autonomous cars today, even though that technology is there. One, government regulations. Every time Senate sits down to talk about these AV or, we'll call AV or autonomous vehicle regulations, there's a lot of fighting going on. And because every side wants something different and who's getting paid by whom, you know, it's typical government stuff, that's been shelved and it keeps getting pushed to the next Congress. And that's what we're seeing right now. Oh, we don't want to touch that because everyone's afraid it could be negative for them because the first death, which we've already had one, from the lady in an Uber, and that was a year ago, that caused a lot of uproar. And so the Department of Transportation got involved. So that has to be resolved, which it could be, if we can actually come to some common sense of, let's add a lot of safety features, a lot, and someone behind the wheel and not a vehicle without pedals and steering wheel, which is what they want. Listen, that's an amusement ride. I'm not in for that. You want an amusement ride, you can go to Darien Lake. I'm out. I used to say Crystal Beach, but that's not there anymore. So I'm dating myself. Yep. Uh, the second thing is the insurance companies. As you said, who's at fault? Are you at fault? Is it the manufacturer? What if it's the other driver? So now you've got this conversation mm. of, and if you're an insurance company and you own that company, let's say, I don't know, pick a company, Geico, mm. whatever, their company, there's a company insuring them. They're called reinsurance companies. They don't want to have anything to do with this because it could be really dangerous and it could literally put a company out of business. Okay, so that maybe could be worked out. All right, so now we have hackers. Mm. Oh, we, no yeah. one's addressed that. No. So. There's security departments in literally every single manufacturer and they communicate, they have a consortium. Every brand is together and they have a consortium and they share the data so they can put up firewalls. Well, these hackers are good. That's what they do for a living. So they will go, oh yeah, they just put yeah. up this firewall, watch this. Yeah. And these kids have nothing else to do, who knows where they are. They've hacked cars 30 miles away. They had a problem with Jeeps in Houston. They hacked a Tesla in China. They've hacked cars in Detroit. They know how to get around the system. Then you go, oh, they've got trackers. Listen, I know someone just had a car stolen. They thought they could track it. It was from a manufacturer. That was, they pulled them out that quick. They pulled, so these kids or these people, these bad people know what they're doing and you're fighting them constantly. So that constantly is an expensive factor that will come into the cost of the car. And the one that you can't do anything about, no matter what, weather. And mm. we live in Buffalo. <laughs> now you remember yep. last year, yep. do you remember there was a 50 car pile up on the throughway? Uh -huh. It was Absolutely. horrible. Yep. But if you had an autonomous mm. car, would the car just park itself? Would it pull over to the side of the road mm. and leave you there to freeze for somebody to potentially hit you? What would it do? Would it not let you go on that going, I'm sorry, Mr. Arno, we cannot take you to your destination today. The weather looks mm. bad. And you're like, seriously, I have yeah. to get to work. And what if you're having a heart attack and you have to get to a hospital? And, or a and baby or something. Is there an override? You know, yeah. It, yeah, there's it's, a lot it's, of factors. That is what really scares me is, is there's no human 
element that can make a judgment based on any of the circumstances. Right. It, it's just... It, it and that's going to be the big holdup. So because of that, it, yes, you could produce that car today. And GM's like, we're going to get vehicles on the road by 2019. Eh, I don't mm. think that's going to happen. Yes, they're testing them. And there's even a company uh, that just opened up out of California. So they're testing in Arizona and they're testing in California. Now, here's the interesting thing. Consumers are not happy about this. You would think they'd be, this is great. Listen, if you want to ride, you call an Uber, which we now have in the Buffalo area. You can call a cab. We have cab service. You can call a car service. You can call a friend, right? There's a million things you can do. Have someone else drive. In Arizona, after that woman died a year ago, there's people out there testing again. They're back testing again, not with the same vehicle. And do you know what's happening? Mm. They're throwing rocks at the cars. Mm. And that just happened last week. Mm. And I'm thinking, why would they do that? Because it takes jobs away from drivers. Interesting, didn't think about mm. that factor, because what are these people gonna do? And on the other side, people are afraid that it's gonna hurt someone else. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that they feel that that's the answer by trying to obstruct autonomous car technology. Mm. There was someone who was saying that they got in front of one and purposely hit the brakes hard to see if it would hit them. I'm like, okay, there's a lot of crazies out yeah. there. We know that, and like you said, Yep. <laughs> I'm not part of that group, right? but I'm just saying those factors are out there that you can't control. And these are factors that really concern me from a consumer standpoint. Do I really want one of these? And I'm one of those people I will always drive. You will never see an autonomous car in my garage, yeah. ever, <laughs> ever, ever. I don't even like riding with I other agree. people because most of them don't drive so well, <laughs> as you were saying. <laughs> well, this goes really quickly. And yes. you know, when, when we come back, because we're out of time on this segment, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the other technology that's mm -hmm. out there. We're going to talk about Lauren's book that I suggest you run right out and get Thank if you. you are interested in cars and taking care of cars. And um, some of the things that are the future of what is practical. So mm -hmm. we'll be right back after these messages and I'm you know, everything interesting about cars. We'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back to the big picture. My guest is Lauren Fix, the car coach, and she has a very interesting book out that you can get on Amazon and, and some of the local some local bookstores or on my website, laurenfix.com, and you can buy some other goodies. I have emergency oh, kits and right. of course this, the bag. This fix. is very interesting. This, this is something that you should have in your car. It, it's really handy. It goes over the It goes the, between the headrest, the headrest post. Mm -hmm. We sold out on QVC. Uh, it started because my daughter, who was going to Buffalo Seminary, had heavy backpacks, like all the kids do. And she got in her car and said, I don't know where to put this thing. And she didn't want to put it on the floor. And then she had a purse, of course. So we created this at my husband's office. And we manufacture tubing products. And this is made here in Lancaster, New York. And these tubes are made of stainless steel, and they go one in the back of each headrest post, or you can put them in the back row. Kids' backpacks, lunch bags, you can put uh, workout bags, whatever you want. It's great for when you bring home wine from Premier or something, you can hang yep. that on there, or eggs or berries, yeah. things you don't want to get crushed, and holds over 50 pounds. Keeps everything neat. Yeah, keep no more yeah. dirty purse bottoms is how it started. <laughs> and where can you get this again? You can get that on my website, and you can get two of them for under $20. Good, very good. Very yeah. good. Well, you know, I always used to work on cars when I was growing up because mm -hmm. I couldn't afford a mechanic, but yeah. now it's like working on a computer. So if you don't it have is. computer skills, I mean, I did a brake job a couple of weeks ago, but other than that, there's not yeah. a lot I can do you on can a do car. You can do brake pads, you can change yeah. oil right. and filters, and I do a lot of that in my vehicles as well, wiper blades and simple yeah. things, but you but, can't do heavy stuff anymore. No. They really kind of limit it. Um, Although I have some performance vehicles and I have put some chips in them and some aftermarket <laughs> exhaust, but there are some limitations where we used to say, I'll put the carburetor on yeah. your car. I mean, I used to be able to rebuild a carburetor in, in, in about that. 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm with you. Anymore. <laughs> now, a lot of that's been stopped. And as a matter of fact, when you open the hood of a new car, all you see is this big piece of plastic. Right, right. It says, don't touch yeah, me. Go to out. the dealer. <laughs> no well, trespassing. The dealer is great. And if your car is under warranty, that's fine. But there's also some wonderful independent technicians in some chain stores in Buffalo. And I have to say, I go all over the country. We really have mm -hmm. great dealers and repair shops in this area versus some other areas of the country. Um, you know, the, the trend now, you see more and more SUVs. Mm -hmm. Very well, popular. You know, versus regular sedans. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're going now as yeah. a nation? Sedans are reducing. Uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler, even Toyota's now looking mm -hmm. at it. Honda's looking at reducing the selection of sedans. You gotta remember mm -hmm. that unless you're selling a 
you know, Mercedes, they're going to always sell those sedans. Mm -hmm. Lincoln will always have the Continental. But where's Lincoln going, for example? They've got the Nautilus, the Navigator, the Aviator, and those are the things that are really popular. 65% of car, or vehicles sold, light trucks, mm -hmm. are SUVs and trucks. Mm -hmm. There's not much left in the car department. And convertibles are even less. Manual transmissions are even less than that. Of course, both my kids drive manual transmissions, and so do I. <laughs> I like to control the power. <laughs> well, it, it's, uh, it's one of those trends where the utility of the vehicle now, mm -hmm. you, could, you can put more in, a, in an <clears> SUV, <throat> yeah. uh, more people, more groceries, more, more stuff. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and does, the, does the gas mileage come in? To, are people making decisions based, based on that? You know, I think at one point when fuel was, and we both remember that, at some point it was really, really, we're going way back. It was yeah, comparatively. Yeah. Comparatively, and now it was up at $5, and now it's down. Now that we're fracking, whether you like that or not, and that's a personal choice, you have to know that that's reducing the cost of fuel. Mm -hmm. And even though New York State has one of the highest gasoline taxes, we're still hovering around $2 a gallon. And as long as it's way down there and under 4 to $5 a gallon, People aren't thinking that's that much. They kind of figured that into their budget. Some people, of course, it's more important than others. Then there are those people that think, oh, I'm gonna go hybrid or I'm gonna go a plug-in. And remember, everything has a cost. You may not see it up front, but you'll see it down the road. And when you really look at what we call cradle to grave from the beginning and the manufacturing, the process to the end, and you look at the true costs, an internal combustion engine is still your best bet. And that's, that's always been the case, really. I mean, it's the most efficient way, I mean, with the infrastructure that we have with gas stations right. and so on. It's going to take quite uh, an efficient alternative to replace the internal combustion engine right. or the gasoline that, that mm. fuels that. Well, diesel's an option. I have diesel. I, I have a diesel, diesel as well. I love it, my diesel I'm, SUVs. I, 700 it, miles on a tank, I 34 know, I, miles of the gallon. I can go back and forth to New York City <laughs> on one tank. It's you must have deal. the same car that I have. Yeah. I have. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> amazing. It, it, it's harder and harder to find diesels now. I don't know whether... Well, Jaguar Land Rover offers it. All the trucks offer it. Ford offers it in their F-150. Mm -hmm. Ram offers it in their half-ton truck. Chevy's offers it. What about SUVs? The SUVs, you can get anything in Land Rover or Jaguar, pretty much available mm -hmm. also in sedans. BMW offers cars in uh, diesel. Right now, they're, they're trying to get approval on their SUVs. Mm -hmm. Mercedes has pulled out. Of course, you've got to remember Volkswagen Group, which right. includes Porsche, Audi, and Volkswagen here mm -hmm. in the U.S. There's other yeah. things under their window. They're not offering that here in the U.S. right now because they cheated the system. Yeah, yeah. So when someone cheats the system, I watch history repeat itself. Mm. So way back in the 70s, you may remember diesel and they were smoky and black, and they, yeah. but they not were popular. Anymore, yeah. But they were pop Then they got rid of that. And in the early 2000s, they came back with clean diesel. And it was clean until someone at Volkswagen said, yeah. <laughs> I can make it without putting what they call blue in the, yeah. in the tanks. If you own a diesel, yeah. we know the what DEF -E is or blue. Yeah. D -E -F. And then what it does, it br reduces the exhaust emissions. So if that you have it, a cow, you don't need to go to the That's true, because cows actually produce more <laughs> methane than cars or anything else, believe it or not. <laughs> you can look that up if you don't believe me. Um, but you, it actually reduces the exhaust pipe. So that's an option. Now we're looking at hydrogen. Hydrogen mm -hmm. does work. Compressed natural gas does work. And as a matter of fact, a lot of manufacturers like Honda are doing hydrogen and CNG, which is compressed What natural about gas. the infrastructure? How, how will we refuel It's not if there we go yet. Down? You have to have tanks, and that's mm -hmm. the one thing. And I mean, you've seen kerosene also, mm -hmm. which you can use in some certain diesel trucks. The thing you need to know is if you're in California, you can lease the vehicle and they've got great incentives. But what I'm not fond of is you're using the hydrogen to charge an electric battery uh, to power it. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. well, that's not the point. Because mm -hmm. now you're using two different forms and you should be using one. Now, if you're using hydrogen or compressed natural gas mm -hmm. to run what used to be a combustion engine, and you can convert that yourself if mm -hmm. you're really talented, that would be really cool. That would make mm -hmm. sense. Because now you're, especially with hydrogen, water comes out the tailpipe. Right. That's not going to affect anybody. A fuel cell basically is electrically charging a, a, right. a, 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 the hydrogen, an electrical hydrogen uh, or motor, yeah. basically. So that would work. Now, you're looking okay. at electric vehicles or EVs. Everyone mm -hmm. says it's the rage. Well, I'll be totally honest with you. Less than 1.2% of total sales. And in 2018, we sold 17.2 million light vehicles, which is cars, half-ton trucks mm -hmm. and such. Less than 1.2% were electric vehicles. And you know where they're sold? California. <laughs> Why are they sold no there? Because the state of California, Jerry Brown, when he was the governor, said, if you're selling more than 2,500 cars in the state of California, you must, must sell a plug-in electric vehicle that's pure electric. If not, 
you can't sell vehicles in the state. Yeah. So how that would affect Ford, GM, Chrysler, everybody. everybody. I mean, it may not affect Ferrari because they're not selling right. 2,500 Ferraris there. Or Lamborghini. There, yeah. Or Lamborghini <laughs> or certain, the, you know, McLaren. But for the normal cars that we see on the road, I mean, guys, Rolls Royce isn't, might yeah. go there because they want to. But the fact is, they don't have to. So now all these manufacturers, if they don't, they're fined. Huh. And the fine is quite exorbitant. So that was how Tesla was making money as he was selling electric vehicles and you get these credits. So for every vehicle that a regular manufacturer sells, they get four carbon credits. For every vehicle Tesla sells, he gets seven. So he's got an extra amount. So he was selling them to other manufacturers while they were coming up to offering hybrids. And that's how he was funding his company because he takes a loss of $36,000 in every car. I'm like, anyone out there know how you have a loss and make that up in volume because I, I don't know I've been so in business sorry. my whole life and I can't put those numbers together it's called gaming the system yeah well he's really good at it I have yeah. to say he's great at SpaceX and putting out infrastructure for other things but I think the car business is one that's a very tough business to make money at and he certainly hasn't figured that out hmm. Wow um, when you're looking for a car today how mm -hmm. much does the gadget factor oh it's huge. come in it's huge as a matter of fact, you're watching everything, even Mitsubishi's offering a lot of these things because they knew they had to revamp their line and go more SUVs. And you're seeing that with all the brands, more SUVs, compact crossovers, smaller vehicles to big trucks. You're still seeing Escalades and Suburbans sold. So here are the standards, in my opinion, I've reviewed, oh Lord, over 75 cars easy last year. And I'll probably do at least that many. I'm the president of the North American Car and Truck of the Year. So we call the Car of the Year, the Utility and Truck of the Year at the Detroit Auto Show every year. So I will tell you right out of the box, if your vehicle does not offer Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless charging, heated and air-cooled seats, and lumbar support, you're missing the five things <laughs> that consumers want. And you may go, well, why are those important? Everybody's connected to their phone, everybody. You don't have GPS, no problem. I plug in Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You know, I wanna charge. Everyone wants to be charging all the time, whether you're the driver, or someone else, maybe you have two devices with you. Maybe many people I know carry two phones. Yeah. Sometimes I do. But you think about all that, and then of course you want comfort, and you want satellite radio, which should be a standard. And they're charging for a lot of this stuff on some brands where you look at like a Kia Forte, under $24,000, and all that's included, and I was blown away. As far as I'm concerned, that's a great vehicle. 24 grand and you're getting a vehicle with all these standard, standard. That's what it should be. That's yeah. what we want. We want to be connected. We want the goodies and the gadgets and the safety, the one thing you can't add later, safety. Yeah, that's, you know, I knew it was a different world a few years ago when I was going down to Florida and the mm -hmm. kids were in the back seat and I was, and the phone rings, my wife answers the phone and it was the kids asking, you know, when are we going to stop for dinner? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> in the back seat. In the back seat, making a phone call <laughs> to the front seat. I mean, so, okay, the world is now totally crazy. Oh, I, I, oh, I'm with you. I know. Well, my kids have always been, one of the things with my daughter, her name is Shelby after the car. She, we always have this little contest who can get on social media quicker. So when she started Facebook, I did. And so now literally we're both on all forms of social media and I'm easy to find. I'm Lauren Fix. If you're on social media, my daughter Shelby Fix, but we're always on these early so we can get our names. But it's interesting as she learned, I learned. And that's how I had to learn because you don't want to have your kids know how to connect. <laughs> Uh -huh. differently than you because in order to communicate today no matter what you're doing whether you're in an autonomous <laughs> potential vehicle or at home you want to be able to reach people and that's what you have to do i mean i got my father-in-law's got a phone i said no more flip phones can we get to this decade you know <laughs> well it's, it's 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 tough to keep up i'll tell you yeah. the kids know more than i do in that i just can't you, you got to keep up it. with it I, well you know, really. apple watch and, it, yeah, and all that I mean, stuff <laughs> i got it too you know you, you got to be connected well you know it goes quickly. This is a subject that we can do about 10 shows on. All right. Um, we're going to basically revisit this subject, you know, in a, in a future show. Okay. We're out of time for this show. But I'd like to thank my guest, uh, Lauren Fix, the car coach. And I'd like to thank you for watching uh, The Big Picture and for watching WBBZ TV. We always appreciate it. Don't forget to look for Lauren's book and the... There it is. Okay. <laughs> and um, we'll be able to uh, uh, visit again in the future with Lauren, and I appreciate her being here. Once again, thank you for watching the show, and we'll see you next time on The Big Picture.